It's God calling. Another day. Another way to see what it is that God might be doing with you and me. You can tell I haven't gone to the uh, heavy artillery of wake up because I'm with my Pepsi in the morning, but I haven't started my coffee. <laughs> what starts your day? You started dash, mad dash. We used to say dash and crash in the shower. Do you lay back in bed and open your eyes and thank God for the day? Do you lay back and think, God, I wish I could stay? <laughs> you know, all of those are valid and real ways to start your day. They're being honest before God. Yeah. Maybe you don't feel like a million bucks. Maybe sometimes, like this plant the other day when I didn't water it, and the sun beat on it, and we could say shine. When it withered, sometimes too much of something is too much. And maybe too much joy in the morning or happiness is too much for you. Maybe you're not a morning person and you're perfectly content to not be Mr. Sunshine or Mrs. Sunshine. <laughs> for my wife, I can say that of the two people that likes to wake up in the morning, uh, I can laugh and jump out of bed and run on my, my way for the day. And for her, it's not such a happy morning, you know. She says she's a content person, but believe me, you don't want to mess with the woman in the morning, you know, because she's getting her day together. But you know, she's faithful and true to every day sit down with her Bible and talk to God and pray. And that's what my point is this morning. How did you start your day? How are you going to finish it? God inspired. You've entered now upon a mountain climb. Steep steps lead upward, but your power to help others will be truly marvelous. Not alone will you rise. All towards whom you now send loving, pitying thoughts will be helped upward by you. Look to me, all your thoughts are God-inspired. Looking to me, <laughs> I'm going to say, no, my aren't. <laughs> I don't think so. Looking to me, all your thoughts are God-inspired. That's better. Act on them, and you will be led on. They are not your own impulses, but the movement of my spirit, and, if obeyed, will bring the answer to your prayers. Love and trust. Let no unkind thoughts of any dwell in your heart. Then I can act with all my spirit power with nothing to hinder. You know, that brings to an interesting point is that you shouldn't let those thoughts hinder you and stop you from doing what God might be saying for you to do. But don't think that you won't have them. Don't mistake not dwelling on a thought with having the thought. You might be, you know, like a corrupt little turkey, you know, just thinking all kinds of wacko stuff. But, you know, if you keep getting rid of it and slowly reprogram your mind to think differently, then you no longer become mindful of those thoughts or participate in them, but you become more focused on what you and God want to do together. A good example is, I can tell you about every Marine I know. I graduate from boot camp. When you talk about the F-bomb, guess what? Marine Corps, you learn to be an F-person through boot camp until you become a non-F-person after boot camp. And you need to, the person has to actually program themselves. Because I remember when I came out of boot camp, or when I came out of the hospital and then out of boot camp, it took me a long time to not resort to just simply drop that word like it's no big deal. And it's funny, in our society today, compared to 30 years ago, you know, we are making a big deal out of the F word, and I know that there's cultures, you know, using the N word and the F word as though it were common, because in that culture, they seem to think that, you know, it's okay because it's just a sign and form of interpersonal communication. Well, you know, bluntly, when someone else uses it, out of that context, they get upset. 
and any person does, with certain words that focus the wrong thought process and the wrong attention of where you want to go with it on something that produces in them anger and wrath and malice. And do you want to be an angry person? Just participate in those negative thoughts you're having. And I don't mean negative and positive, because sometimes a negative thought's a good thought. Hey, when I think somebody's wacko, <laughs> guess what? You usually are. <laughs> now, does that negative thought take me to the place of judging them? Of course not. I think they're wacko, and that God can still use wackos and work with them. But the point is, is that whatever it is that they're saying is pretty whacked out to me. So I just laugh at them. I think it's funny. You know, I think most of the time when people read my writings and I, I state something, you know, that's the fact compared to what they posted, which is usually fiction, they think that I'm being judgmental or harsh and it's no I'm confronting the error with the truth so the person who's reading can look at both and decide by the Holy Spirit which one which way you want to go with your thoughts it's the same way if you are programming your mind transform renewing it by reading the Bible by studying it by applying it and if you're allowing God to speak to you through devotionals then the Holy Spirit can take those thoughts that you've read and apply them to your mind like a computer, reprogram it, and you could be focused in on the direction of your thoughts. Oh, sure, you're going to hear things in the world that you'll repeat at first, like the song that can't get out of your head, or like a, a word that somebody hurt you with, or some emotion that got attached to some song or feeling, or in a negative way, you know, some experience. But that can be turned around too to turn your attention away from that thought to the Lord to Jesus in some way if you let it and that's what daily lights all about or that's what God calling today was all about it's just simply letting God be God to change the direction of your thoughts to reject those things that aren't productive for you to something that might work in your life and mine. I know, for me, I could say the word Jesus, and that's positive. Because I know some people say Jesus Christ, and that's negative. <laughs> See how well that works? So, my thoughts in how God is speaking to me today is that whatever thought comes in my head, if I'm focused in on the direction that is to be positive and is to take it to the Lord, then it will be the Holy Spirit inspiring me for some reason to consider him or the person or the thought as being from God, and the choice is mine to where and what I'm going to do about it. And so, with you, may the Holy Spirit today, in some way, as God, speak to you and show you that your thoughts can be directed by him to cause you to take your day and make it productive in the way that he would have you to go so that it will not only transform you but all those around you because you are the light <laughs> guess what like it or not you're light and you're salt and you're there and you're being watched <laughs> and if you're not being watched by god you're being watched by everybody around you but you know what god is watching and he loves you